What is up everyone, I'm Scratch, welcome to the channel, this is another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. Today, we're gonna talk about rare heroes that are better even than legendaries, guys. We have a lot of awesome heroes in Dragon Air Silent Gods, but as usual, a few of them stand out more than the others. Before we move over to talk about all that, I just want to say a big thank you to Dragonair for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are new to the channel or you haven't tried Dragonair Silent Gods just yet, you are missing out. Season 2 is in full swing. The Echoes of the Sleepless event, it starts in 6 hours, guys, which is the second phase of the Dungeons and Dragons collaboration event. So if you want to help and support the channel as well, guys, you can download the game by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. And talking about some amazing rare heroes that we have in Dragon Air Silent Gods, I'm going to explain you where you can actually use the heroes, how you should build them as well. So we're going to start with the fire element. Recently, I made a video on this, uh, on this hero. Now, as a disclaimer, guys, these are not necessarily the top six rare heroes in Dragon and Silent Gods. I do think that a lot of them are situational and uh, it really depends what exactly you're planning to do with them. These are just six rare heroes that I want to highlight because they're really, really amazing and I feel like they can bring a lot of value to your accounts. Now, keep in mind, wild heroes work better when they have more wild heroes in the team, etc. So having the right elemental combination for these heroes and uh, bringing the right uh, damage architecture together, it will benefit them a lot. So I've made a video on Bronwyn, guys. Absolutely amazing. I had him next to my Casper and he was hitting like 30% more than Casper. I was like, wow, okay, better, better, better. So much damage. So Bronwyn is a wild hero. He's a damage dealer. Fairly decent base stats. The main thing with rares, of course, they don't have such a amazing survivability like a legendary hero but the pro with rare heroes are so much easier to scroll which will allow you to really maximize their uh, their potential so he has this amazing uh, passive where each successful wild check by allies grants a damage bonus to the heroes next basic attack then of course the battle skill will uh, be a wild attack too and he will uh, increase his own attack and right here will deal fire damage and ignore shield now, one thing to keep in mind, you want to use him either on an inventor set. If you have a, a gambler set, can work on him as well, but not as good, of course, as the inventor. The main thing that you want to get on him is get as much crit rate as possible and then balance out to be the attack and crit damage. 100 plus crit damage, 3-4 thousand attack and as much crit rate as possible will get the job done. He does not require any accuracy. Now, in terms of uh, artifacts, honestly, whatever you might have available uh, left in your team. The Eyeball of the Giant is, without a doubt, the best option as a budget artifact. So keep that in mind. Moving over to the next character that I want to highlight, guys, and it's going to be from the Frost, uh, frost uh, element. And yes, probably you might be wondering, Scratch, are you not going to talk about Usha or Nord? Even though I talked about both of these champions recently, I want to talk about Gulal, guys. So this is a hero that we are all getting for free when we start playing. And he might not be the craziest damage dealer. He might not be necessarily the most insane hero in the game. But he has a trick up his sleeve, okay? He can bring decreased attack with his ultimate skill. And he summons a bird, a vulture, okay? With a battle skill, he calls, uh, he calls the bird to the battlefield to attack uh, together with the hero. And he has the passive that when the battle starts, he summons the Vulture again. My buddy Van Horn Gaming actually did a very interesting thing with this champion against the Chaos Shadow Boss in the Radiance Lunar event and in the other world event. You have a Jern as the boss there, right? So basically, he was tricking the boss with his bird and with a tank to only attack them too. And that's a great, great strategy that you can do with this hero. And not only that he will bring you attack penalty, which is massive, right? But you can actually utilize the bird to your advantage and trick some of the bosses with the positioning. So that's why I felt like he deserves a deserves a bit of a, a bit of a shout out. He's definitely a very underrated rare champion that can do the job really well, man. Decrease attack is massive against single target bosses. He doesn't have crazy AOE and stuff like that, but he's gonna he's gonna get the the job done, you know. Now you want to build this hero with damage as well, guys. 
as much crit rate, crit damage and attack as possible, but he will require some accuracy. So you can either play around and use double skill haste sets on him, inventor, executioners, uh, whatever you might have available that will allow you to get the stats. How I mentioned, you don't necessarily need to prioritize uh, him as the main damage dealer as long as you can trick the enemy. A serial set will work amazing on him because he debuffs and that will put increased attack on the rest of the team, you know? So keep that in mind. In terms of artifacts, I would suggest you to don't necessarily use the crown of the unclean because he doesn't have a multi hits in here, but you can use maybe the incense burner, something that will help you either with the accuracy, either something that will help you to deal more, uh, more damage. Moving over to the next champion, guys, and this is going to be from the necrosis element. There's no way in hell I'm going to have somebody over Megan. I'm just loving this champion to that. And I feel like the main reason why is because Necrosis just doesn't have amazing support. And she's all we've got most of the times, especially if you're not a, if you're not a Kraken that has all the champions, you know? So Megan, top notch. You want to build her for season two, for example, on a Moonlight set. So whenever she's using the ultimate, you're gaining more healing. And like that, she will have some extra skill haste. This passive is so underrated. She can cleanse the defense down on your entire team when she's using the ultimate. Amazing for the Vortex. I've put quite a few videos on her out there, guys. So definitely don't sleep on Megan. The battle skill is super strong. So you can actually use this for PvP too. You have a champion that's a massive threat at the very front of, uh, of your team. He takes damage. And Megan's battle skill is quickly going to jump on to assist that champion and giving him 25% ultimate energy, allowing that champion to quickly use the ultimate skill. Maybe a Voresh, maybe a Tamar, maybe a champion that will quickly turn the tide of the fight, you know? So definitely, definitely a solid, solid uh, skill. The ultimate, defense up the smaller version, and recovery over time on all of your team. As an artifact, guys, I find it pretty hard to find the, the perfect artifact for her, I'm not going to lie, because the recovery over, uh, over time, I don't think it gets increased by uh, the book that increases the healing, you know, so maybe the candle is a good artifact for her battle skill, you know. I find it pretty hard, honestly, to, uh, to pick the, the perfect artifact for her, but I feel like the candle or, uh, or uh, something like that is going to to do a good a good job on Megan, but a moonlight set is the way to go on uh, on Megan. Moving over to the next hero, guys, from the Radiance element, right here as well. We have we have quite a few solid ones. Walby deals an amazing damage. Kaleido is a decent one, but again, Quarian is just too too powerful, too powerful. And I drop legendary heroes out of my team to bring him in. That's how impactful this rare hero is. He is a support hero. He increases the healing with a, with a passive, with a battle skill, grants a shield and recovery over time to one ally. And the ultimate kills all your team and gives defense up the small version. What makes him so powerful is having this short cooldown on the ultimate skill, 9 seconds and 16. Again, you want to build this character on a moonlight set with as much skill haste as possible. And yes, you should definitely use the book on him that will increase the healing. No questions asked because that will be very, very helpful on, uh, on this character, you know. And he's great against Chaos Shadow bosses. Uh, great against a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, content in the game. The new boss that will come with the Dungeons & Dragons collaboration event. If you need him for some of the dungeons, super strong. Especially that he has that amazing uh, battle skill that shields and uh, gives, you, gives you healing, you know. Definitely do not sleep on Quarian because you're missing out. No questions asked. You are missing out on him if you're not uh, if you're not using him, you know. Then, moving over to the next elemental affinity, guys, and we are talking about the lightning element. Here we have quite a few interesting uh, ones as well. We have some nice uh, damage dealers for Dauntless, like we have uh, Vanny, we have Altair, we have uh, Yagnets. But I want to talk about Irina. It's a no-brainer. She is a powerhouse, okay? If you want her for the Fame Ender, if you want her for the Pillar of Trials, if you want her for Dungeons, if you want her for Arena, 
she is going to do an amazing job. Now, she's a support hero undercover. With a passive, she's actually going to grant a shield to the nearest ally. With a battle skill, she's going to unleash a, uh, a chaining uh, damage to enemies, which actually hits pretty hard with a very nice initial recharge time. 3 seconds and 8 seconds. Very, very strong. The ultimate decreases attack, AoE and damage. And has a chance to dispel a buff from the enemies. Now, she is amazing on a stun set for the Pillar of Trials. She's amazing on a stun set for Arena, even for the Fame Ender. If you want her to do damage, the Inventor set is probably the best on her at, uh, at this moment. You can run, of course, a Gambler. You can run a Emperor or whatever, Rat, whatever sets we actually have in Season 1. <laughs> season 2, I forgot the, the names from Season 1. But she is actually a powerhouse. You do need to build her with accuracy, okay? So the main thing you need to prioritize on her as well is crit rate, crit damage, attack, accuracy, and then some survivability. Even if you are building her on a stun set, you still want to squeeze in some damage. So maybe crit rate, gloves, attack, chest, you know. As an artifact, if you are planning to build her uh, with a stun set, yes, the eyeball of the giant is great, but it's not a necessity you can go for a uh, something else like an incense burner the more times she's uh, dealing damage the more chances she has to stun the enemy you know and that will help you with the accuracy being able to reach the 200 plus accuracy is not as easy as it might sound and if you want to land the stun from a stun set you do need accuracy guys so Irina, i'm using her uh, i'm using her a lot actually and in season one she was key for me beating the uh, pillar of trials on some of the stages before we got to the bosses because having her on a stun set was actually super super uh, powerful very helpful and moving over to the last element guys the poison here as well we have a lot of awesome rare heroes lorari danch eli sigrid hexandra g gel but i want to talk about eli guys you know why i feel like i've i've been talking about sigrid for a long time now and Eli, he is more useful right now in, in the Dungeons and Dragons boss because Sigrid, she's a support hero, so she doesn't really have a damage build. But Eli, he's actually going to be your main carry, your main damage dealer. He has an attack aura for all battles, which is great uh, against the Chaos Shadow bosses, against the new boss that's coming with the Dungeons and Dragons uh, event. Even for the Goblin Arena, you can get a bit of a value from the hero. The passive will deal derivative damage whenever the enemies are uh, under poison. The battle skill will put attack uh, up on him and will deal damage with a chance to inflict poisons. The ultimate shoots straight ahead and shoots three times, dealing a lot of damage. Now, he is a great, great hero to have the Witch's Remains or the Crown of the Unclean artifact on him. You do need accuracy. Poisoners are much, much harder to build uh, comparing them with the rest of the heroes. If you want to get a lot of damage from the uh, from the passive and poisons, you want to have some enlightenment. You want to have crit rate, you want to have crit damage, you want to have attack, you want to have accuracy. So you need a lot of stats on this hero. When we are talking about artifacts, I would really suggest you to use him with the defense down artifact because that will give you a lot of value because of the multi-hits. Let me know what other rare heroes you guys think that are better than some legendaries in Dragon and Silent Gods. Again, you know... You know the drill, Dragoner actually does an amazing job by uh, allowing rare heroes and epic heroes to be part of Meras, you know, like being strong heroes, which is great. Not everything is about uh, legendaries. Now, that was all for this video, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thanks again to Dragoner for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys want to get involved, you can download the game by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.